Today's message is brought to you by the Partners and Friends and Anthony Trice Ministries. God ordered if you get him, then you get the other stuff. The Bible says come from a hotel and be ye selfish and talk about the other thing. Do you have faith in the word of God? Let's get into the word with Dr. Anthony L. Trice. I went through that and in fact that's the time I met Jesus. That's the best time I met Jesus. We have Turkey. <laughs> it was wonderful. So this man treats the people. He puts people into a soundproof room with a glass case and he makes them clap their hands hard. You can go into your Google checkup and find out. Dr. Zhao has proved that every organs in your body has the nerve endings in your palm. In other words, if you can massage this rightly, wait, wait, I'm coming there. Uh, if you can massage it rightly, that's what my, my kids do when I can't get sleep. They give me a, you know, and now she's learned it, my wife has learned it, we do it together and she does it for me and I'm off to sleep. I mean, my kid, when I call my kids, they rush to do it, they know I'm off to sleep immediately. <laughs> So, and he gets these people inside these glass cases and makes them clap their hands much. Now listen to me. All clapping is not clapping. <laughs> All clapping is not clapping. God bless you, sir. All clapping is not clapping. God has freed you, my brother. Hello. God has freed you. Yes, sir. You don't have to spend it on clap anymore. You don't have to spend it on track anymore. You are free. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. This is wonderful God. Don't spend it on track anymore. If you still collect your money to use it for your next hit, come and throw it here for Jesus right now. Mm. And uh, this man, uh, if he makes you clap inside a room, God bless you. While he's clapping, he's taking, he's ripped you off for 3,000 bucks. After six weeks of this thing, after six weeks of clapping their hands, they get healed of cancer and one more treatment, they have to shout. Now it's all soft spoken people from God bless you, God bless you, who have come from Hollywood, from uh, big, big places, from the Silicon Valley, from the Silicon Valley, and they are not used to speaking loud, they are used to speak softly, you know. It's like everything is done softly. Even I love you. It's softly. Yeah. It's all soft. They're not used to shouting. So they are put into this room and they are made to shout. And they are made to clap their hands. So two things they do. They are forced by the doctor as a prescription to clap their hands and shout for nothing. Wow. And they are healed. If that is the truth. Supposing you did this for the Lord. I don't know what you've come for healing today. I know one thing. Your healing is at the tip of your fingers. And if you can shout out loud. By the way, you are not allowed to shout. Did you know that? From the time you were born, your mama said, shh, silence. Your daddy said, shh, silence. God bless you. And once you went to school, remember when you went to school, they told you, shut your mouth. Put little more bass on this place. Little bass. Little bass on this. God bless you children. He said, Silence. And when you graduated to college, they told you, shh, no so. So, so much so that your voice has been choked and blocked. You can't shout. All you can shout is when you're desperate. But the Bible says in Psalm 47 verse 1, shoot up that voice if you can please. Psalm 47 verse 1. You know what the Bible says? Clap your hands all in people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now this evening, I believe God is in the house to give you healing. Amen? So I want you to put your hands together for the Lord and make a loud noise unto God.
feel I have more time of clapping and showing free love, okay? This is a therapy. If, if you can get sleep, stop taking those pills now. Put, go into some restroom and put your hands together and show. Trust me, you will sleep well. If you're going to court Turkey and your bones are paining, clap your hands up to Lord and show it to him. He will release his heel on you. Shout to
You know, uh, uh, they are, my thing is like you going back home and you're ordering for a Big Mac and you're saying, what is that thing the children have? What's that? Happy. Oh, yeah, please, one happy meal for the back and one two Big Macs here for me and my wife. So the two Big Macs come here and when you look for the happy meal, there's nobody in the car. And is it good that you jump out of the car and search there? You ain't gonna find it there. You've got to find it where you lost it. Amen. Amen. Now this happened to Jesus in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Turn with me to Luke's Gospel, please. If somebody gets it, you can read it. So we make it faster before this, they get it on the on the board. In Luke's Gospel. him to have been ridiculous. Supposing, look 244, please. Root 
of bitterness. Wow. Say to me, root of bitterness. I ask, I ask the Lord, Lord, why is this called root? You see, when you see a plant or a tree, you do not see the roots. For example, if you had gone to McDonald's or KFC and while eating, as usual, you drop ketchup here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you can see it, isn't it? You can see it. But if a throw poop on your back, you can see it. Someone need to tell you that. Amen. Amen. But if there's a root inside you, nobody can see it. Because you've got a sweet smile. See? Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> but you've got a root inside that is bitter. And the strange thing about this root is, it don't start thick. Root starts thinner than hair. And it goes into crevices. And you don't know about it. You got a sweet smile in front of the mirror. You know, you look so nice in front of the mirror. But, and when you smile, but you don't realize this root is growing inside. If you don't pluck out the root that is by your house, if you don't pluck it out, this root has the power to grow. Say grow. You don't know about it because then you need a bulldozer to break your building to take the tree out. Even the biggest tree, even the biggest building can break. Even a rock can crack with the root inside. And you don't know this root is growing inside. But today by the word of God, because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharp with an any sword, it can go into your soul and spirit, inside your bone and marrow, and check your eyes and see if there be any root of bitterness that is troubling you. It may have happened when you were young, and you've had that desperate poison against someone. Now listen to this. What is in your mind is transferred to your body. If you believe you are healthy and washed in his blood and you are perfected, you will be. But if you don't, if you think evil, this is not a garbage can. This is a temple of God. Amen. You are not supposed to give garbage. By the way, you are not aware of it. It is growing, it's growing. Something happened to you when you are young and you can talk about it. But this bitterness is inside you. Many forms of bitterness. You don't like one special race of people because of something. You don't like certain people. Bitterness is a very huge subject. But I will take some few instances in the Bible and relate it with us and see if that bitterness is in us today. And by the power of God and His Word, we will pluck it out in Jesus' name. And we will go back healed completely. Amen. Amen. But now, but now I'm saying, hey, we worship in church. What bitterness are you talking about in worship church? We are Holy Spirit filled church. But guess what? Bitterness came in the worship place first. Oh my God. Did you know that? Yes, sir. That's good. Two people who went to worship. The first children here. Cain and Abel. Cain was the first one to think about worship. He brought the fruits of the ground. But it was dead. He brought the fruits of the ground. He said, I work for it. Grace, you don't have to work for it. It's not by works, it's given to you freely. Yes. Amen. Amen. So he worked hard and he brought, it looks something like this by the way. He may have decorated it with a few dead flowers you know, to make it pleasing for the Lord. But that was against God's plan. God's plan was you must bring a lamb. 
and you must cut the lamb. You must be bring a live lamb. Your worship cannot be dead. Your worship should be moving. Amen. When you come into the house of God, you can do this and do yoga inside. This is a place to rock your body and worship it with all your might. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. It should be a cry inside you. The Lord, when it comes to worship, the Lord, the, 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 the hands are tight, the legs are tight, and the life will come up and blood all over the place. Does it look very nice? But God has respect unto that worship. There are only two kinds of worshippers in this church. You either are an able worshipper or you are a king worshipper. If you are an able worshipper, let me hear you put your hands together. Move yourself and shout. Let your hands fall out. Let your hands swing for Jesus. 
Lazarus was speaking. He had a bench by Jesus said, Lose him. We are all being dead in sin. We need to be loosed. We thought this place doesn't belong to us. That place belongs to you. Cain had root of root of his face had he needs a face lift. You're right. You see some people who go back from glory house from the church. What's the problem? No, 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 no. I know your problem. I don't bring your problems in the time. You know? Don't bring your problems with my problems. And I know one thing. When I praise God, I worship Him. When I give Him the glory, I want to give Him hallelujah. And when something happens in the heavenlies, why do I worship Him? God moves for me. Somewhere, somehow. Why is your face? Don't don't miss your money on facelift. <laughs> all you got to do is worship God with all your heart, with all your mind. And shout out to God! Give him a praise! Hallelujah! <laughs> Bring a smile on your face, brother John. It will help you. It will release something inside of you. And even when you clap and praise God, there's a healing. Something happens in the heavenlies when you worship Him. He know that, I know that, 32 years, I am tired. Every time I see a glory, I keep praising you with all my heart, with all my soul. And with all my strength, it's the commandment of God. Why is your face fallen? If you don't pay heed to that call, you will become a murderer. That's what he became. And you don't listen to this call. You will turn out to be a murderer. That's what happened to Cain. He didn't hear that call then. He should have been just humble. Say humble. That's the key. Yeah. You just have to go and ask people how you do it. And I will give you a simple answer. I did nothing. I just took that and did it like it's it. And this house here inside, whatever you call this church, it doesn't make any sense till you are able to burn out for Jesus. It don't matter what the people play here and sing here. The whole idea of this house is to give yourself as a living sacrifice unto God. Amen. Paul said, "Promises, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to offer yourself."